20 years from now, somebody's going to be trying to figure out something new. This will be old hat, you know, <laughs> but <laughs> right now it's like everybody's scratching their head, but it's a, it does work and it's something fabulous. So we can wait till it's uh, till it's up and running. So. Hmm. <laughs> I'll tell you what he thought was really fantastic is when he went to the memorial. Uh, he went two times. He went with my sister one time. They drove there the first time. The second time he went, uh, he flew out of Cleveland. And uh, he went by him. You went by yourself, right? Mom was passed already. And uh, he met uh, my nephew, uh, uh, Bobby, up there. Yeah, well, no, they, that was the one they took to Cleveland. Yeah, uh, set up for me. I'm calling my uh, ex. Yeah, it was uh, they were sending uh, the the vets, that, the World War II the, vets, yeah. to see the memorial. Right. right. I'm just getting. I'm just now getting involved with them in the honor flight program. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. 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 Just that now getting that. involved with them. A friend of mine wants me to to, to help out. So. That's oh, like he that. had a great time. Oh, on I had a great time. He had a great oh. time. I hear yeah. all nothing but good stuff. So that's yeah. uh, that's yeah. terrific. So. The you know, only thing at that time he didn't he didn't need a wheelchair at that time, but he right. he, bl he blames being in a wheelchair now because <laughs> he put him in a wheelchair over there. <laughs> well, he put me on the wheelchair that I could go to on the train. I didn't sure. have to wait. They, they, they passed yeah. me out. Didn't yeah. have to take off my shoes or nothing. They kept us in a group. Yeah, they took good care of him. They really did. Showed us a real good night. The whole two program was good. That's terrific. Last yeah, I, time I was last time I was going out to see my son in Arizona, uh, we got at the airport at about 6 a.m. And I walked in and there was a line of wheelchairs and I knew three of the guys who were pushing the wheelchairs that are friends oh, yeah. of mine that, that help out. And that's when they started to ask me, like, why did you come along one time and see? So I, I'm uh, I've been putting it off, but I'm going to try and do it before the year's out. So and uh, we'll see what happens. So, so. do it. But yeah, it was a long day for him, but he didn't mind it. Uh, yeah. It was early in the morning. They brought him back late at night. It was like 10, yeah. 11 o'clock at night when he got sure. back. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And they wouldn't let him get out of the wheelchair until he got to his car. They wheeled it right to the car. <laughs> and then they then, then when I was going to pull off, they jumped in front of the car and had to salute him when I was leaving. And my, my uh, cousin, Titi, was with us. And we, we couldn't get over... Uh, uh, how you know how respectful they were? They were really was really oh, something. Well, most of those guys have been through it. They, they, almost almost every one of them has been someplace, you know, yeah. you know uh, down I to. Could tell that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty hard not to see that. I mean, when you go by, it's like, whoa, these guys are serious. But it's you know, uh, I had a a funny little uh, adage to this. My father was a uh, was cha uh, chaplain of the Pearl Harbor survivors here in Cleveland. Yeah, uh, he was a he was a marine as well, and, and uh, hence I joined, and then my little brother joined as well. But um, we'd go to we had family in Falls Church, Virginia, and every summer we went. We drove to Washington, <laughs> and if I didn't see the Marine Corps thing, there was something wrong. My dad wasn't feeling well or something. But we always <laughs> we did the whole thing in Washington D.C. almost every summer. So I could I could probably walk to all the things now, you know. <laughs> Yeah, sure. <laughs> but he loved it. I mean, he loved it, and uh, we did too. I mean, I, I I never complained. Believe me when I tell you. So, any we just lost some people on the screen here. Is that? Tina's still there. Yeah, I just turned my camera off. So you. Oh, okay. Okay. We were recording with somebody's legs. So yeah. Mary, <laughs> you may not want your legs on the recording. So yeah. you may want to. Gary, they're recording in Kathy's legs. Move your camera. Is there anything? <laughs> so our, somebody's legs, somebody's legs are getting shown off here. The recording. There you go. Uh, you can turn your camera off if you don't want to be on the recording. Wendy, how close are we to getting started? All right, you think we're ready? Yeah. Yes, I think we're ready. Okay, we are already recording, so Don is going to go ahead and All right. go ahead. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody, for coming. I don't know how many folks are there, but it looks like about 20 or so. Um, and it's very nice of you guys to represent for your uh, for your dad, your grandpa, um, whoever that uh, this gentleman might be to you. Um, my name is Don Stark. I'm a uh, Lance Corporal in the United States Marine Corps. 
uh, and a Vietnam veteran. Um, I spent uh, spent some time doing some crazy stuff, and uh, but it all it's uh, I've been I've been okay with everything. I've been, I've I've just you know I I'm not one of those people that's had it all jammed up inside me all my life. And since since that's happened, I can share with other people, and we find that uh, these uh, veteran recognitions really open up the family's discussions of things. If there is anything that needs still to be discussed, sometimes those uh, come to the forefront. And I'm very, very pleased to say that I've seen some very, very fabulous stuff. I started a little story before, but we uh, got uh, stopped for uh, for uh, reasons un unbeknownst to me. But there was a gentleman that we did about a week ago, and his, uh, his son was standing next to him. And at the end of this... Uh, ceremony we play the uh, call to the colors uh corporal you know that uh call to the colors was usually at end of day and we do that at the end of our uh, uh initiative that we're doing today and this gentleman was sitting there and uh i asked for a salute if i can get one from everybody i know we're not so we're both enlisted we're not supposed to salute each other but that's over with for me and i think it's probably over with for you as well but um the young man that was standing next to his father said, I've, I haven't seen my dad smile like that in a long time. And it, 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 in the reading, in one of the readings that we're going to do, you'll hear just how proud we are to have served our country. Um, with that, I'm going to begin. I'm going to read some prose and a couple of, uh, couple of uh, comments from people. This, uh, this gentleman, President John F. Kennedy, spoke, a nation reveals itself not only by the men and women it produces, but also by the men and women it honors, the men and women it remembers. John F. Kennedy. This is called, It Is the Veteran. Uh, it's been in our playbook for a long time. Um, it's, it's really what we talk about. It's really what we do when we get in the service. Uh, this is uh, attributed to Charles M. Province. It is called, It is the Veteran. It is the veteran, not the president, who has given us democracy. It's the veteran, not the Congress, who has taken care of us. It's the veteran, not the reporter, who has given us freedom of the press. It's the veteran, not the poet, who has given us freedom of speech. It's the veteran, not the campus, campus organizer, who has given us freedom to demonstrate. It is the veteran who salutes the flag, who served beneath the flag, and whose coffin is draped by the flag that allows the protester to burn the flag. This next piece is rather lengthy, but I happen to love it. Uh, one of my uh, associates at the Hospice of the Western Reserve wrote it, and he wants to remain anonymous. Um, he's just one of those good guys. He was a loach pilot in Vietnam. Uh, he became uh, buddies with all the Marines because he'd fly in anywhere in the loach, anywhere. And I've got stories from friends of his that say <laughs> he's a little bit, he's a little twisted, but he did what he had to do. But anyhow, uh, Jim is a super guy, and he wrote this and asked me to uh, put it into the service. It's called Sacrifice. Sacrifice is the surrender or destruction of something prized or desirable for the sake of something considered as having a higher or more pressing claim. Sacrifice and service go together. Military service involves sacrifice from the very onset of raising one's right hand to take the oath and continues through to defending the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Sacrifice is giving up your identity and your self-centeredness in basic training when your hair is cut and you give up your privacy in an open barracks bay with a hundred strangers thrown together from all over the country. It's forsaking any pride, any dignity, and respect you brought with you from your civilian life to be broken down and rebuilt into a trained, regimented, and proficient member of a team with the primary focus on mission accomplishment rather than personal reward. 
sacrifices the son, daughter, mother, father, brother, sister, aunt. Boy. Oh boy, I, I lost the sheet here. <laughs> My, I feel terrible. Anyhow, I'll, I'll skip ahead just a tiny bit. Sacrifices having the trauma of war taking a cumulative toll on you and your family. It's leaving your family without you being available during their daily routine or having to fend for themselves during the occasional emergency. It's seeing your battle buddies severely wounded or killed. Sacrifices being honorably discharged from a cause bigger than self, leaving your unit, your brothers and sisters in uniform, the mission, your purpose, and then struggling to transition back into civilized society where the population who hasn't served in the military can't even begin to understand nor appreciate what you've experienced, the things you've seen, heard, lived, and endured, and in many cases continue to deal with internally on a daily basis. Sacrifice and service go hand in hand. However, the decision to willingly accept sacrifice comes before military service, before it actually begins and remains indelibly etched in the soul of the veteran for the rest of his or her life. I like to get dressed up at the end part. <laughs> I'm uh, both uh, veterans of foreign wars and American Legion, and I feel better with that on, so got the cover on. Corporal Mooney, it is with great honor that I say these words. Some time ago, whether you enlisted or were drafted, you stood up, raised your right hand, and took an oath. That oath contained the words to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. You wore a uniform and were held accountable to a higher standard compared to your civilian counterparts. As you and your fellow inductees began the necessary training designed for the rapid acquisition of a military bearing while learning the customs of the service, you became known as GIs. GIs have always been given the task of defending our country against all enemies. Veterans typically look back on their military experience with a sense of satisfaction and are proud to have been associated with something larger than themselves. Recognition for your contribution is well-deserved, sir, and your sacrifice is appreciated. Please wear your pin with pride. I don't know who's putting the pin on. Uh, Wendy, are you doing the pinning? I'd, I'd like to ask maybe Patrick to do that. Okay. Hang on for me for one minute, please. It's right here. Right there. Well, that concludes the regular service, and I thank you very much for all being present. Um, Denny, is it Denny that I call you, sir? Good. Yeah. Denny, I, I understand you did the Battle of the Bulge. Uh, I hear about that. I've read about it, and I just I still to this day don't believe it. But it's like it's something that uh, uh, I'm sure you hold dearly. I, you had a lot of friends that were with you, and uh, it's, uh, it's one of the things that uh, – I'm glad it's over with, but uh, we should be very proud of you and your service, believe me, so. Oh, well, with that the Battle of the Bulge, 
uh, the, the, uh, St. Louis, we had a reunion, and that was real nice. They had everybody that was up there, you know. And they gave us uh, the, the, Please. no, the, I died, I can't forget about that. I just died. They, 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 they did a good job. I think you did a great job. Where's he going? Got a plane going over? <laughs> you guys ordered that? <laughs> That's very cool. Well, you guys have a great family uh, together. Uh, enjoy your time together. I really, and really, I think I'm the luckiest guy in the world. Amen. God bless, bud. That uh, for those of you that haven't seen the pin yet, it's the uh, shape of the state of Ohio with crossed flags, the hospice flag with the uh, crossed with the colors. Um, we're very proud of it. Um, there's a lot of a uh, lot of us veterans wearing them, and uh, it's just thank you, thank you for choosing hospice of the Western Reserve. I thank you, and I'm going to say goodbye. You thank guys you. take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're all very welcome. Thank you. Service. Take care, guys. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Corporal, take it easy, buddy. Okay. That's beautiful, Papa. Yeah. Got from yeah. 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 Ye